Hello, everyone. I am so thrilled to be joined by my amazing client, Taryn, Taryn Laganegro. I wanted to invite her on so that you could have sort of a mini case study on um, a real business owner who went through the steps um, like I I described this or class series this week. Thanks, Kim. So I am the co-founder of Extra Lucky Mom. Um, my co-founder, Jess Corello, and I founded ELM in uh, 2001 in May. We stopped just wanting to be a platform that was an inclusive space for parents in the disability community. We both have children with Down syndrome. However, what we found was that all of these communities have little silos and we wanted to just create a square no matter what disability your child has, no matter what disability you have, there's space for you with us um, because we share so much of the same day-to-day -day thing, so many synergies, and we can have a space to celebrate, advocate together, do all of those things together. So we started as this like little blog and Instagram platform and we thought like, okay, let's just see how things go. Like, let's, you know, maybe get a thousand followers, you know, <laughs> like we, uh, you know, we had small goals in the beginning and we just started, we just started listening to the community as far as what the community needed and um, started developing different programs, um, different offerings. And um, then the Today Show reached out to us in uh, the fall of 2022. I was going to call it um, out if you weren't going to call it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that really like, you know, that was a huge thing for us as far as like visibility, quite obviously. And we had been... Mm -hmm in the initial stages of working on our the book that we published this past spring called Dear Mama, Stories of an Extra Lucky Life. Um, and that really gave us so much more, um, so many more people to work with because so many people were like, hey, now I wanna be a part of this book. Um, so we were able to like grow the amount of disabilities that we were in the book. Um, we had so many moms who you know came forward to write for us. So that was, today's show was huge for that. Um, and we had, started dipping our toes in the corporate speaking world um, little by little, just from people reaching out to us, like, hey, can you come talk to my company mm -hmm. about um, about disability for DNI? And then we really thought like, oh, there's something here because as we started, we both came from corporate, corporate America, and we just felt like there was so much to do there um, as far as changing the narrative around a working parent in the disability community. Um, I won't bore you with a ton of statistics, but the burnout rate is no. super high, um, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. which then contributes to the high rate of poverty in our community and, you know, all of that. So, and as, and, and it's also just such a huge audience to reach from an uh, awareness perspective on disability and just mm -hmm. kind of making the world a little bit smaller. And um, so we, you know, we had all of these things going on and then, in, yeah. you know, in like, in like May or June, I was like, I had been seeing your posts, Kim. And I was like, we need to coordinate this chaos. <laughs> I love that. I love that. You know, I like, yeah, I calm the chaos, right? <laughs> yes. So, yeah. um, you know, well, I know we'll talk about this, I'm sure, but yeah. what we've really been able to like fine tune that corporate program, because we basically came to Kim and we were like, we don't want to have to sell like high value things to our own community because that defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do. We're trying to, you know, change this narrative in corporate world to because of this poverty rate and all of this stuff. We're like, we don't want to be, you know, we don't want to, we want to be able to provide free resource to our own community, um, mm -hmm. but also have a business that we could you know, support, we could hire other moms in this community. We could hire other mm -hmm. caregivers. We could mm -hmm. maybe someday hire our children, <laughs> like, you know, yeah. providing employment for this community. So, you know, yeah. and that takes, that takes money. So, you know, we, we were like, we need to grow this corporate thing. And, you know, that's really what's been, uh, you know, our a huge thing for us this fall and um, mm -hmm. a lot on the horizon for 2024, which yes. we're very excited about. Yes. Yes, you have a lot, which I know we can't yes. speak to just yet. So, but we, yes. I will have you back when you can speak yes. to it. And, yes, um, you know it. It really is a testament to how 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 hard you and Jess have worked for two years, and um, specifically the work you did in a very short amount of time. Um, you know, when we work together, and this is being, you know, juggling so many different things. Both of you have so many things on your plates, and so yeah. it really, it's just so it's so inspirational. Your story, not just 
what you do, but what you model for other people. And I think that's really important. And so, and I do want to go back to something you said, because I think it's actually something that um, is a great point or an example of something that um, some business owners often struggle with, which is finding the right, what's called, um, it's like, it's kind of a boring term, but like product, product market fit. And that's like product based or service based, but finding that right product market fit can be challenging at times. And so you touched on something that I think is part of why you've had this really like accelerated success that you've seen. Um, there's two things. Number one, I think you saw what's what we call a gap in the market. We talked about this in the masterclass series back on Monday. We said, you know, finding that product market fit is really looking at the market and deeply understanding what they want and yeah. also finding a gap, like finding an area where people are not um, fulfilling a, a need or a want. And, and I really think that your DEI, DEI initiative and what you saw the corporate w- world needing, um, and more importantly, having the statistics to back up that yeah. point. Um, yeah. you know, I, I think that it was crucially important in positioning you. I think it's why you were on the Today Show not once, but twice, why yes. you were able to be on CBS Nightly News very recently. I mean, I call these really big things out because A, you worked really hard and B, you really have um, what we call a strong product market fit. It's something really needed and you're serving that community. We keep saying, we've talked a lot this week about being um, client centric, keeping the people we serve at the forefront of our decision-making. Cause when you do that, you are filling a need in the market. And I think you and Jess have done an amazing job of doing this in such a short amount of time. Um, So so really, really great job. And and then the second part I wanted to touch on is, you know that my big push is for business owners to really get clear and understand omnipresent marketing. So really making sure you're you're using and, and leveraging the four pieces of that strategy um, for you. Um, I will be honest, most people do not garner national television. Yes. <laughs> right. I mean, that, that little caveat to that, but yes. um, well-deserved, well-deserved and, and it's amazing. And, you know, but I do want to just touch on that, whether it's at the national level or at your local level, you know, yeah. really having that PR piece, I think was huge for you, for, for Extra Lucky Moms community. Um, And I think it also has helped you really understand how to get more visible. Um, Can you talk a little bit about some of the strategies that you use? Because I know you use them all, all, online, offline, SEO and PR. Um, Just if you could just let people know your personal journey over um, the past couple of months, I think it would help them give them in, you know, really valuable insight. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the the biggest thing for us this whole time has been authenticity. We, you know, we're very straightforward in how we talk about everything. And, um, you know, we're very, we also are so community focused, not just from like our own community, but like, who can we work with? Who can we collaborate with? Mm -hmm. We're, you know, Jess and I, from the beginning, we're like, we're here because we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. We didn't want to create another space for the down syndrome community or you know we we still like now we had a corporate talk a couple weeks ago and someone was asking for recommendations on a certain organization on on something and i said oh i know that organization that that you should reach out to and rather than trying to like do all of these things that somebody else is already doing well we yeah you know and 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 the nice thing about that collaboration is you just never know what's going to come from it sometimes we'll jump on a call with another organization and really we're just like oh let's get to know each other and then by the end of it we're like wait we have like a co-branded offering here like (laughs) yeah Uh, so kind of like teaming up and not letting competition you know come Mm -hmm. into play there but yeah we i mean we use all of the forms of you know getting the word out there Mm -hmm. that you can in 2024 we have a Kim, we haven't even talked about this, but we have another media, another media outlet, um, another media direction coming out, but um, which we'll talk to you about soon. But yeah, um, I mean, <laughs> I really, like, every, like, time, every time I turn around, you guys are blowing <laughs> it up. It's amazing. I mean, it just it goes well, to because show we, yeah. like our community is such a busy community. So we're like, 
we we have to like find multiple ways to reach people because not everybody can sit down there and sit down and read our blog. Not yeah. everybody has time to scroll social media, but like we're, you know, we'll find a way to like hit whoever, you know, whatever someone has the 10 minutes for that day. Yeah. We'll make sure yeah. that there's a lot of ways that they can digest that. That you just did a beautiful job of explaining omnipresent marketing and why it's so important. People are busy. People are stretched in. People consume in different ways. And so to really um, grasp and, and, and gather the people who are meant to be in your community, who are meant for your services. I mean, it really, you, you've touched on so many key components of why, but, but I also think what, what is important to, cause I know the behind, like behind the curtain kind of a thing. It's important to know that it's a cohesive message you share. So it's, it's, yeah. yes, it can be tiring showing up across platforms and doing all the things involved. Now you have a wonderful hire that you made, um, that, you know, has been strategic in helping you maximize your ability. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you and Jess are very clear. You're very driven. You both have a strong message to share and you both have unique characteristics, you know, traits that allow you to do that. But I think that, yeah. you know, no matter what stage of the business growth journey, your journey you are in, a person is in, um, you have to embrace that multimedia, plat you know, multiple platforms. You have to be able to um, spread your message in many, many different ways because it takes multiple times of hearing it, of bringing it to the top of mind for people so that you become that first, you know, first to mind factor for your audience, for the right audience, um, while yeah. still, you know, meeting the needs of, of what they want. Now, the last thing I want to talk about and that I want to touch on that's super important in our time working together, we talk, you know, I'm a big believer in what's called um, customer lifetime value. That is something that I think um, a lot of people ignore or they, do, they don't mean to, but they just, we, we, there were a lot of different ways that we talked about that. Um, but I, I would love for people to hear how you have monetized your business because it's not really in the way, to your point from a few minutes ago, it's not in the way that one would think, um, which is to provide, is to solely provide resources for the disability community. You've actually gone and done other, uh, found other ways um, to meet the needs of the market. Can you share whatever you're you're able or comfortable sharing with that? Yeah, of course. And and it was probably the first thing we said to you in our in our meeting is we want to have a successful business without having to sell directly to our own community and directly means like literally asking them to hand over money obviously we're constantly putting things in front of them that they're digesting and then which all has value even if they're not even if they're, we're not selling them a 25 five dollar product let's say and you you don't always know when you reach somebody when you're going to see that come back to you you know right. what i mean like yeah. it could be it could be in them mentioning you know mentioning you to their corporate you know mm -hmm. dni dni lead and all that mm -hmm. but we you know we have low ticket items that is available that is available to our community like our book we have merchandise mm -hmm. like little mm -hmm. things because just from a brand awareness perspective, yeah. all of that stuff is really important. We love when we see someone wearing our t-shirt. I was just, just, just going to say, you know, I probably yeah. wear the most comfortable sweatshirt on the yes, planet. Yeah. My, my yeah. ex wealthy mom sweatshirt is yeah. my favorite sweatshirt. I have to like <laughs> hide it from my kids so they don't steal it. So my daughter doesn't steal it. But, and I'm going to put all of this in the notes when, uh, when the live is over, I'm going to go back okay. in. I'm going to add links for the Dear Mama book. I have it on my bookshelf right behind me. Yeah. If it, it is the one of the most inspirational, beautiful books I've ever read, and I'm not Thank just you. saying this because Taryn's on the on, online. <laughs> Thank you. And and I'm going to put that link up, and I'm going to put up the link for um, where you can uh, find your Extra Lucky Moms merchandise, which is mm -hmm. high quality merchandise, and I'm yeah. going to link that. But then there's also another because as if they're not busy enough, they also do. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking events, um, so so talk a little bit, and I know there's other things in the works, so I don't know what you can and can't talk about, but yeah. share whatever you're able to so people can understand um, the, the, that product market fit. Yeah, so we, um, as we were digging into this, like like I said, we follow, we follow what our community is talking about, and mm -hmm. at some point we were all talking about working and how to, you know, we would hear constantly, like I, I you know, I had to give up my career or I felt like I had to give up my career or whatever the reasons were. And as we were like digging into that, we found that it was really not because of the complex 
needs of their child or, you know, some of it was that, of course. And that's like, if you have to hit pause and support your family, that there's no greater amount of respect that I have for that. Mm -hmm. But we would hear a lot like that people just didn't feel supported to be able to juggle what they needed to for their Mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. And then as we were digging into that a little bit more, we found all of these companies have these huge DNI initiatives, which is amazing, but mm-hmm. only 4% of that funding is spent on the disability community. That, that and blew my it's mind. It's like insane. Like that, we were like, oh my, my God, why? And awesome. I was just, yeah. I, I oh. was even doing market research the other day and looking at a company that offered advisory services and mm-hmm. nowhere on their entire website did the word disability come up. It was crazy to me. So, so we were like, okay, we both, Jess and I are both very comfortable public speakers. We love talking about this stuff. We love learning about it. I'm constantly like reading new things, listening to, uh, listening to podcasts, all the things that I can do so that when I talk, I am, you know, speaking from the latest and greatest, but we love doing this stuff. So we were like, oh my gosh, there's a thing there. So, you know, we, we do the corporate talks. We're starting to develop a more like advisory service program Mm -hmm. where we're kind of like on hand to Mm -hmm. be available as things come up or as Mm -hmm. parents and families need support. We have a goal of like bringing someone onto the team who has a disability themselves so we can make sure that we're covering the basis of how to support an employee who is disabled be successful Mm -hmm. in their career. We speak a lot from the parent perspective right now because Mm -hmm. that's what we know and you know yeah and then just getting that awareness in general out there to people like you just never know who that's going to resonate with and how they might then change their approach to to somebody else so that's where we want because that money is there it's being spent on somebody to come in and and talk so we want to be the the, that person for for many reasons but also because having that be our a main revenue stream for us Mm -hmm. will allow us to continue to serve our community without Mm -hmm. having to have a membership or anything like that. That was why that became like one of our huge pillars. Of, yeah. Of and an important one. And I think you touched on statistically so many, you know, it doesn't matter what economy we're in, what market we're looking at, what, what is happening. There is always money to be spent in the market. And you have, as the business owner, you have to ensure that you're finding that product market fit where there's a real need and then you're keeping, I, I liked how you said you, you, you not use, that sounds <laughs> negative, but like you had your community help you literally figure out the need yeah. in the market, right? Like yeah. they actually guided you. And so that's an example of how keeping the people you serve at the forefront of your decision-making leads to both a high lifetime value for the client and then also profitability for the company, for the business. Yeah. And so I think that that's, you know, I think when, when people focus too much on profit driven activities and too much on just chasing the money, they don't find the real need in the market and they don't position themselves for being true industry leaders who can, can like truly solve a, a problem or provide a result that is not already being provided. And I just think your story is such an amazing example of how when you take time to listen to your community and yeah. listen to what they're asking for or listen for what their struggles are, you literally find the answer that is both client centric and profit driving. And I think that's that's the important part. And you know, it was it was hard for us in the beginning in some ways because I know we talked about this very early on and you helped us like kind of get over this a little, but yeah. it's hard being in the business that we're in and demanding like a certain level of fee and fee, you know, because yeah. I think people think that you should be just doing it for free in some ways. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's yeah. like a nonprofit or a charity, you know, yeah. charity and all that stuff. And yeah. it's like I could either do this or I could have to go and find another way to support my family. So we have to like also have the confidence. You you gave us that, but like you have to have the confidence to be like, yeah. no, this is what I need to be paid for this yeah. because yep. it allows me to do all of these other things as yeah. well. So 100%. And that's a scary first step, right? That's yeah. a scary yeah. first step is, is, is monumentally raising those prices and yeah. really making sure um, that you have not just the, uh, the, you know, the ability to go and present and and do those things, but actually the confident, the mindset piece of, I have real value here that can actually create a, 
a massive ripple effect. Right. And that is what you're creating for the DE in the DE and the EDE and the high community. <laughs> Sorry, I'm tongue tied there. Yeah. And, um, and so, and I think that it's something clearly to your point with a 4% spend on that. I mean, yeah. that blows my mind. I told you this weeks ago, that blows my mind. Yeah. Um, and so you really have realized that, um, you know, think about it. There's all these wonderful workers that love what they do. But when push comes to shove, they're absolutely all of us are going to absolutely choose our family. 100%. You know, what I mean? but that doesn't mean we should have to give up on a career we love, a job we love, serving a company that we enjoy working for. And it's so easy to work together. It's yeah. so easy when you're properly trained to to really support your your team member and to be a team member who can still thrive as a caregiver. Right. And so exactly. It's just a beautiful thing that you ladies are doing. And 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 I'm just amazed at, well, first of all, I have to call out the, uh, the your action taking, right? What did I say? <laughs> I mean, like we'd have a call and I would say X, Y, Z and like, boom, within like yeah. less than a week, it was done. So, I mean, I think that's an important, you know, I can, we, like I say this a lot lately, you know, working with me, it's a partnership. I can yeah. bring the strategy. I can give, I can give the advice I can do. But at the end of the day, if the business owner doesn't take action, if the business right. owner, to your point, is um, doesn't just you know feel the fear and do it anyway, you know yeah. whether, whether it's raising the prices or going out, you know, being live and being able to public speak about whatever their their services are. I mean, there's just so many um, just golden nuggets that you've shared today that people really need to hear um, if they really want to see strong business growth in 2024. I mean, you've really yeah. wrapped up this whole week series so beautifully um, with like real examples of what it takes. Um, to grow a, a successful business, a rewarding business and a client centric business. I mean, I'm it's, just, I'm, I just can't believe it. And it's like, so true that the, the cliche phrase that when you love what you're doing, it's mm -hmm. not work. Like yeah. I used, you know, I had the yeah. big fancy corporate job and I would have to get up at like five in the morning and start working or work till 11 o'clock at night. And it was because I, I had to, you know, mm -hmm. like I just had to, it was unfortunately like the workload and I, what I had to do to get yeah. done. Yeah. Now, uh, when I get up, I turn my laptop on because I'm excited about it. Like I, so that's, that's how we get with you. done I'm, because yeah. I'm like, when, you know, I'll work at all yep. hours. I don't care if I love what I'm doing. I, it doesn't feel like work at all. So. Um, I'm, I am the exact, <laughs> you know that about me. I'm the yeah. exact same way. I have to be very yeah. good sometimes. I have to remind myself that, you know, my family needs me or my, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and, but we say it, you know, with love because it, it is true. When you love what you do, it really doesn't feel like work. Right. Um, and, 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 and I do want to just close up on the one, you, you did add something that I forgot to mention, but you touched on the importance of, of networking and building and building strong relationships. I think yeah. that is a key component. I think too many people go into relationships immediately thinking, what can I take from this? Right. And I love what you said about just being open to getting to know people and having conversation and really creating this really strong network of individuals who can come together over great conversation and no, maybe they won't ever be a client, but I, like right. I say all the time, you never know in this, the world is smaller than we think and you never know who's connected to whom and just simple conversations and serving and being somebody that makes strategic introductions or connections, you know, that is really, um, what it's about. It's, it, it's, it's like how the world becomes a stronger, better place is when you all connect collaborate, not compete, and really understand um, your industry and your position in the market. And so, yeah. um, you know, I just, I so appreciate you giving up your very valuable time to come on here. We're almost at the half hour mark, so I want to be respectful. Do it anytime. <laughs> um, but I just adore you. I adore you guys. Just extra lucky moms, all that you're doing. Um, if you are tuning in live or if you're catching the replay, please make sure um that you go and see all the links that we're going to drop in. I'm going to drop in the Dear Mama book. I'm going to drop in this, the 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 link for the coziest sweatshirt and other things that you'll ever see <laughs> in your entire life. Um, and Taryn's going to give me a whole lot more uh, resources to share with all of you. And please be sure to re you know reach out and connect with Taryn and Jess. We're going to link all of that uh, in the show notes. And I just, Taryn, I adore you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Uh, Thank you. So many beautiful things in this world. Thank you. Thank again. you so much. So are you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.